Good evening. My name is Corinne Turtis, and I will be the commentator. Today's Gospel from Luke is a continuation of last Sunday's. Last Sunday, after the people heard Jesus proclaiming the reading from the prophet Isaiah, some responded to his message with enthusiasm. But this enthusiasm was short-lived, as we'll hear in today's Gospel how others turned hostile to his message. Similarly, our first reading that is related to the gospel also reveals that the prophet Jeremiah will face hostility, rejection, and suffering. These readings invite us to reflect, will we be hostile towards the word of God, or will we gladly hear it, allow it to guide us, and even correct us? The celebrant from this, for this Mass is Father Daniel Nascimento. Please stand. We gather in prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we heard today, the introduction that we, there are those who are hostile to the Word of God and they do not accept it as uh, a way to guide us or to correct us. But let us not be like that. Let us welcome that word and allow that word to transform us into the mind and the heart of God. For our sins, our divisions that have led to violence in our world, let us ask the Lord to forgive not only our own sins, but the sins of our world. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. God in the highest glory, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless 
bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. O God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. But do you grind your groins? Stand up and tell them, all that I command you, be not crushed on their account, as though I would leave you crushed before them. For it is I this day who have made you a fortified city, a pillar of iron, a wall of brush against the whole land, against Judah's king and princes against its priests and people. They will fight against you, but not prevail over you. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Shame in your 
your justice, rescue me and deliver me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. Oh my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. I will sing of your salvation. My hope, O oh Lord, my trust, O oh God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb you are my strength. I will see. salvation my mouth shall declare your justice day by day your salvation oh God you have taught me from you until the present I proclaim your wondrous deeds I will sing of your salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy, and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge. If I have all faith as to, as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it is not jealous, it is not pompous. It is not inflated, it is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are many, if there are prophecies, there, are, there they will be brought to nothing. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For for we know partially, and we prophesy partially. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child reason as a child. When I became a man, I put aside childish things. At present, we see in distance, distinctly as in a mirror, but then face to face. At present, 
I know partially. Then I shall know fully, as I am fully known. So faith, hope, love remain, these free. But the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus began speaking in the synagogue saying, today the scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, isn't this the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb. Physician, cure yourself and say, Do here in your native place the things we heard were done in Capernaum. And he said, Amen, I say to you, No prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, There were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built, to hurl him down headlong. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the things I love about our Catholic faith, about our Catholic education, is that it teaches us that God loves us. In this great big universe, we're not an accident, and we didn't just show up here by ourselves, but we were created in love. We were created for a purpose. And we're all unique and special to God. God equips all of us with our own individual gifts that we can use it to be a blessing to others. In today's first reading, we heard from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. We are told that even before Jeremiah was born, and even before he was conceived in his mother's womb, God already knew him. God already had something in mind for him to do. And the same is true for Jesus, for John the Baptist, for our mother Mary. Even before they were born, God already had a plan for them. God wanted to use them to bless his people. 
Likewise, the same is true of us. God also needs our help to bring about something good in our world. God needs us as part of the adventure in life. Well, God needs us, and part of the adventure in life is to discover what that is and to do it. To discover that what that something might be will need three things. The first is an openness to cooperate with God, right? Like the prophet Samuel, when he was young, he invited God by saying, Speak, O Lord, for your servant is listening. Speak, O Lord. Or Mother Mary, who, when she was young, said, Let it be done to me according to your will. So that openness, the desire to allow God to direct us, to guide us. The second is to have no fear. Have no fear to do what God asks of us. When God first asked Jeremiah to be his prophet, Jeremiah thought of the responsibility, and then he answered back to God, Oh, no, Lord, that's too great. I'm too young. I'm not the right person. But God said to him, Don't say you're too young. I will fortify you, and those who fight against you will not prevail. Deborah Constance was a vice president in a major realty company. Part of her job was to run her company's charitable charitable giving. Because of that, she developed a heart to help children in poor and crime-ridden neighborhoods in South Central L.A., Although she enjoyed doing her work, but she thought she could probably do more. One day she shared that with her friend, and her friend asked her, well, what do you really want to do with your life? Deborah answered, I really want to open a safe house for the children at Jefferson High School. Her friend encouraged her to do it, but she was afraid. She thought it would cost too much money. And because she had dropped out of high school, she didn't think she had the right education or the right qualifications. But her friend kept encouraging her. In the end, she did establish a community center called A Place Called Home, where hundreds of young people every day come to this safe place to hang out, to find counseling, help with their homework, vocational training, and job placement. She was able to do this because she followed her heart and because she was not afraid to try. Lastly, the third thing we'll need to discover what God wants us to do is to trust him, to trust him. Bob Lodish, he is a finance blogger. One day he compared God with the professional quarterback, Tom Brady. And Bob wrote that, God loves to throw these leading passes. You know, in football, when you throw a leading pass, it means you're not throwing to where the receiver is, but you're going to throw to where he's going to be. So you, you have to lead the ball. You, you throw the pass in anticipation of where he's going to be. Similarly, God is not going to ask us to do something and then allow us to flounder. But at the time when we need it, we'll get what we need. Whereas for me, like, I need everything right now before I'm going to start. But God says, no, you start, and when you get there, I'll get it to you. So these leading passes, just like the quarterback and the receiver. As we honor Catholic schools this week, we acknowledge the good that they do. They teach not only the basics like reading, writing, and and arithmetic, but what to do with the skills that we've learned. So whether a child attends Catholic school here or our religious education program, they are taught that they are loved by God. And each of us is also important and special to him. God gives all of us our individual gifts so that we can use it to bring goodness and blessings to those around us. So don't be afraid to ask God 
to show you his ways. You know, Lord, what do you want me to do in this time of my life? Trust him and don't be afraid to follow wherever he leads you. You'll discover and enjoy the adventure that God has in mind for you and you'll be a blessing to others in the process. Amen. Let us renew our faith in this God of surprises. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and ascended at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son, he's adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Loving Father, you sent your only Son among us to free us from captivity to sin. Rejoicing in our liberation, we trust you to hear these prayers we offer. For the church, that amid the darkness of materialism and selfishness, she be emboldened in, in, in her prophetic mission to bear witness to the world word of truth and light of love in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they resist the temptation to resort to state-funded violence and, to, and work to resolve conflicts justly through sincere negotiation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people suffering persecution and suppression because of the religious practices and cultural identity, especially in the Uyghurs of Central Asia, that they obtain freedom and retain dignity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Catholic schools, that they may continue to instill their students in the highest academic standards, a strong grounding in our faith, and firm guidance in the development of moral character. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially Regina Gilson and all those suffering from long-term illness, that they be given hope and comfort in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Dorothy Sanjos, Florencio Mozano, Thomas Clune, Kun Sim Wong, Father John Sakowski, Tim Cadigan, and Rachel Pasco Sullivan, that they may rest in peace and splendor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
this Mass is being offered for you and all the parishioners of St. Anne. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the personal intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you who have been kind and merciful to us in every age, hear once again the prayers of your children as we entrust them into your loving hands. In your goodness, grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray then, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love. And when as once with the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Until you come. Therefore, Holy Fathers, we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church, which is in San Francisco, by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope, Salvatore our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face in the resurrection. Give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Anne, St. Joachim, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
with one heart and one faith, we pray as Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who may have sinned. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us off to each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. I think we have a couple of announcements. You may be seated. Our second collection this Sunday is for the work of St. Vincent de Paul that assists those in need in our neighborhood. Thank you for your generosity. Asha Shimana, take up the collection. Don't forget to fill out the survey in preparation for Pope Francis' Senate with bishops from around the world. Every baptized is encouraged to participate. Please stop by the vestibule table to either sign up for an electronic survey or to get a paper survey. We'll also have the location and dates for where you can attend an in-person or virtual survey. Catholic schools work week begin this Sunday, and our school will have an open house following the Sunday 10 a.m. Mass. All are welcome to attend. <laughs> Thanks, Cora. Um, Cora was l lipping me that the, the music number is not written down. So uh, do you know what the closing song is? And what the number is? 195. Now I think we all are God. So we can have actually even sing that without the, 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 the book. Thank you. Please stand. And so may the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is in that let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives.